Okay, so this is the DTSC application portal landing page. The first step to accessing our application portal is creating an account. You can do that by clicking this button here. You'll then be asked to provide basic information about yourself and your organization. One thing that's important to note is that you should make sure the email address is spelled correctly because that'll be the easiest way for us to contact you. Another important thing to note is that if multiple users are going to contribute to an application, a representative of the eligible entity should register first. And then additional users can be added to the application in the platform. And I'll show you guys how to do that later. So once you've entered this information and you submit your request, we will accept your registration and you'll receive an email uh, with a link to set up your password. Make sure you check your spam folder because sometimes it will end up there. So the next step is gonna be to sign into the portal. When you sign into the portal, this is the landing page that you'll see within it. This first page shows you information about things that you can do on the portal, it helps you navigate through the application process. So you'll notice that there's a menu bar on the left here, and this is the easiest way to navigate between the pages. So I'll take you through the steps of submitting an application now. So the first step is to navigate to the submit an application page here. And then you can see right now we have two active programs, a request for voluntary oversight and also the ECRG. So you'll click on this button and a new application will open. The first thing I wanna point out to you is that you'll see an overview of the program with links that will bring you to our website as well as some portal instructions that I encourage you to read. The most important thing to know is that when you're working in the portal, the portal does not automatically save your work. So you should save and continue often in order to save your work. Section one of the application asks about eligibility. So the first question is, what type of entity are you? And within Flux, there's conditional logic that's built in. So if you answer a question a certain way, other questions may pop up. Uh, for example, if you're a nonprofit, we'd like to see proof of that status. So this box will allow you to upload proof of that. And the second half is some of those conditions that Ignacio talked about that would make your site ineligible. So read through these. And if none of them apply, or if you're submitting a community-wide assessment, then you'll click this last option and you'll push save and continue to let the system know that you should be allowed to see the rest of the application. Section two is application contacts. And this is where a grantee organization may permit access to the application for additional users. Note that it's important that the eligible entity is showing here. And that's why it's important for the eligible entity to register first and to start the application because Flex will automatically populate this and this needs to be the, the entity that will receive the funding. In order to add an additional contact that can edit uh, and contribute to the application, you should locate the appropriate contact type and you can click add new here. An environmental consultant, for example, a development partner can be kind of a catch-all. So if it nothing really, applies, you can use this one. But what you'll do is click Add New, and you're, you will enter your contacts information. So what's required is the first name, last name, and an email address. And I'd like to caution you to be very careful when you enter this as well, because you do not have access to edit this once you save it for security reasons. If a mistake is made, you can contact us, uh, and we can help you fix that. When you do that, you should hit save, and then Flex will register the additional user for you. And at that point, you can instruct your contact to go back to our landing page where they can reset or create a new password. Once they've done that, they'll receive an email with a link and they should be able to access the portal. So section three is about application type and Ignacio spoke at, at length about 
the types of applications that are accepted. One thing I'd like to point out is that if you are submitting an environmental cleanup application, that an approved cleanup plan is required and we would ask you to upload that as well. So I'm gonna save and continue as a best practice. Section four is asking for details of your site, site information, the Cal Enviro screen score, previous and planned site use, and also site photos. So depending on the type of application that you're submitting, you may need to enter more than one record here. But in this case, we'll just enter one for environmental cleanup. So the way to do that is to click on this blue button here, and a new window will open. So then you'll answer all the questions in here, site name, site address, latitude, longitude. And one thing that's important to note in Flux is required fields are bolded. So you'll be able to tell uh, generally which fields are required. And you'll also need to enter all of those details before you're able to submit an application. Some pieces of information that we're asking for like assembly district <coughs> or Senate district can be found on a web application that DTSC has put together. So you can click on this link and it will take you to this web application where you can either mouse around to find your, a given site or you can type in an address. And you'll see that the assembly district is listed here, the Senate district is listed here and the Cal Enviro screen score is also listed here. So those pieces of information will need to be input within this window here. The next thing I wanna show you is how to upload a document. You can see in general, when we're asking you to upload a document or photos, we've included this green background so it's easy to identify. You'll click on this blue button, add files, and then you'll upload it this way. So it says upload complete. You can close out of this. And once you've done that, the option to add it here will disappear. So you can see that you've met that requirement. There are ways to edit it or change it or add additional documents that I'll show you later on. So go through and then additional documents we're asking for in this are for site photos here. And it's a similar method of uploading that I just showed you. So I'll just add a name and I'll save it. So now I'd like to show you how to move in and out of an application. We've gotten as far as section four. And what I'm going to do, instead of saving and continuing, I'm going to save and close. And that will take us out of edit mode for the application and put it into detail mode. So you can still see the details of your application, but you can't edit them until you click edit again. So in general, on this menu, this navigation pane here, you can see that your applications, or as they're called requests in this system, will be shown here. So pending requests are requests or applications that you've started but have not submitted. Uh, any submitted applications that you provide will go into this box here. And if DTSC reviews your application and needs more information about something specific, it will, the application will show up in this request to edit box here. So as you can see, the application that we just started is visible here, but I can't edit it. The way to be able to do that is to click this edit button up at the top right corner. But I also wanna show you before we go back into this application, uh, the site, site box here. So each record that you create for sites and also for grantee budgets, create their own records that you can edit outside of the application here. So you can see that because we've started the record inside the application, you can now edit them here as well. So I'll go back to the application we started. Additionally, I wanna point out that if you have multiple applications, you can access them all here. Section five and six are pretty straightforward, drop down boxes and text areas for you to answer the questions. 
And I'll move to section seven. So section seven is the preliminary budget detail. So we're asking for you to provide an estimated cost for each proposed task of work. And this section functions similarly to the site record where you'll push this blue plus sign here and it will create a record for each, each task that you have identified. So phase two, for example, and you'll put the associated estimated cost for contracts, project management, and other allocations. And then you'll save. Once you save, you'll see that you have the option to edit the record by using this blue button here. You can also delete the record, or you can add an additional task. So you'll be able to see the total amount that you've asked for here, as well as the breakdown of each task in the snapshot right here. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out is there's an Excel function that will only export the records that you've entered using the blue button. You can't edit the, the records themselves in Excel. You have to do that within Flux. So again, I'm gonna save and continue as a best practice. Okay, section eight is pertaining to regulatory oversight and if you have any existing regulatory oversight, uh, which is not necessary to apply, but eventually is required for environmental investigation or cleanup applications. If you're submitting a community-wide assessment, you would choose not applicable from this drop-down menu. But if your site currently is under regulatory oversight, this is another document we'd like for you to upload with your application. Section nine is related to site ownership and circular liability. Note that as Ignacio said, uh, ownership is not required. If you do not have ownership, then you need to either provide an access agreement or describe how you do have access. So for example, if you have an access agreement and you say yes, that's another document we'd like to see with your application. Section 10 is like a document repository. So any documents that you've uploaded will go into section 10 with the exception of section four because this is its own record. So that'll be kept in here. And if you have to edit it, you've got to go back in either this way or on the navigation pane that I showed you earlier. But in general, any documents that are uploaded would be shown here. You can also manually upload documents here the same way. If you do it this way, then you have the option to tell us what type of document it is that you're adding here. So a cleanup report, all these examples. Section 11 is related to additional information. So anything you'd like to tell us that wasn't covered in the application and also how you heard about the ECRG program. Section 12 states some terms of the application in, is where you will provide a signature, but this happens after the submittal has occurred. So the signature will be collected through DocuSign, but will be initiated by DTSC. So please reach out to us if you haven't received a prompt to sign using DocuSign within two business days of submitting an application. Once you have finished entering all the information on your application, what you'll do is you'll say save and close in order to exit out of edit mode. Now you can see the application in detail mode and you can review your answers. If you need to make changes to any of these answers, again, you can click the edit button. You can always go back in and edit the record until you've submitted. So once you click submit, it's giving you a warning to say that you'd like to confirm to proceed. And I'll caution you that once you submit the application, you can't make edits to it. So please review your information carefully before you submit it. So I think that concludes uh, this brief overview of Flex.